Hey babes, <laughs> what's shaking everyone? I was hiking today with my girlfriend and I don't know, you know, women can hop from subject to subject. So we talked about a whole host of things. But the one thing that I brought up was um, self-care. I don't even know how the heck we got onto the subject, to be honest. And I was saying how I think the pendulum, like many things in today's current society, have swung um, way over to almost the dark side. And, you know, when I say things like this, sometimes women get very mad at me. Um, but I feel like what I'm saying is really valid. You know, there's a, a superficiality to the self-care movement. I'm not saying self-care isn't important, especially if you're a caretaker or you have enormous amount of stress. Um, I'm not denoting that taking care of your, you know, self, that should be a priority, of course. And yeah, you know, do what you have to do. Um, but because I love to make things more practically aligned, um, I think we need to move away from this idea that self-care is chocolate and massages and foot rubs and shopping sprees and things of that nature. Um, sometimes when I'm talking to a woman and I know a little bit about her life and I don't tell people what to do or how to live but you know sometimes self-care is like paying your bills on time doing hard things having hard conversations with somebody um giving yourself a swift kick in the ass to get stuff done and be productive sometimes self-care is self-sacrifice <laughs> really and you know taking a hit for the team or doing what's better for the whole um and i think some people have a really hard time hearing that i do think to and i'm going to generalize but i do think women more often than not put themselves last i think women are very good at putting other people's needs first I think men suffer less guilt and they don't feel as selfish when they do for them. Um, just taking into consideration research on cancer, especially breast cancer, um, every area of the body holds specific energy, emotions. And if you get into Chinese medicine, there's a taste and a direction and Ayurveda, there's, there's a taste too, you know, bitter, pungent, sweet, salty. So there's all of these, and I know this is very esoteric, but this is really not new news. It might be new news to you watching or listening, but it's very ancient. And our ancestors understood all of this to be medicine. And we've gotten very far away from these things because the mainstream medical community can't make money off of you if you know this stuff. And I have a lot of doctors and nurses in the family and my, my youngest daughter is entering her second year of nursing school. And that kid was homegrown. She did not grow up on medicine. So this is really interesting. And you know what I told her? I, my first major was nursing. What, Carrie does not do math. I don't do math. Nope. When I saw the curriculum, I was like, oh, hell no. I'm in the business of helping people. I am not taking all these math classes. So that was the end of my, my nursing career. It ended before it began. I'm extremely proud of my daughter. And I think contrast is really good. And she's going to see a whole nother world, which she's already been entrenched in. And she's going to make her own decisions about things. She knows when she takes antibiotics, she feels like crap. And then when she's hurt herself enough, she calls mama and says, what can I do? 
um, you know, you have to let your kids go. This was a very hard lesson for me, but I had to let my kids go. But anyway, um, I think the self-care movement is just, I lost my whole train of thought. So, cause I go off on my tangents, but I think the self-care movement has gone, oh, the energetics of organs. So like breast cancer, very specifically, your breasts are a center of nurturance and they can very much be an erogenous zone for women. I think sometimes men bypass that area don't because women really need those to be tended to as much as other parts of the body. That's just a whole nother aside. But Gabor Mate, that is one of the leading um, and most renowned trauma experts in the world, talks a lot about women with breast cancer specifically because they're always giving to others. And then they end up with a specific diagnosis of cancer, which is cancer of, of the breast. So there's a lot of data out there, but more often than not, women definitely tend to have a harder time giving to themselves. So I'm not denoting any of this. I'm not saying it's not important or I'm not saying it's not valid. I'm not saying it shouldn't be a priority, but you know, I was listening to a therapist the other day and he was saying, um, he was speaking more about our children, but like young adults. So that age bracket, I, you know, some people consider young adult 18 to 29, but in that vicinity. And what he was saying was, they're just completely different than, you know, I'm a Gen Xer. So he call, he referred to it as westernized individuality and so these kids are very much hopped up on the i and self where i think a lot of us i would say 30 to 35 and over very much 40 and over were raised with a more we mentality and Gen Xers, I mean, we were out on our own. Like we were roaming the streets. I mean, my grandparents and my mother would lock the door and be like, hell no, it's sunshine and rainbows outside. You're not coming inside until the street lights go on and it's dinner and you know, food's on the table. And that was how I was raised. You made your own fun. You lived in your imagination, you figured it out. And so we kind of had each other's backs in the parks and on the streets. Um, and there was a sense of community and connection. And I think that's the darker side and the detriment of self-care is that we're talking so incessantly about it that we're getting away from community care, which is more it takes a village. And if we're going to go back to like the breast cancer um, analogy, community care is even more important, I think, because we need connection and community to heal. If you look at people who've lived well into their 90s and 100 and over, God bless them. Um, they talk all the time about a sense of belonging, having community, having connection. We look at the addiction field. We know addiction is a lack of connection. Connection is the antidote to addiction because addiction is just severe. You're just fractured. You know, you're completely disconnected. You're constantly turning to external sources to fill a void and to just escape and run from the pain. And the addiction field is, was my favorite field. I worked in an intensive outpatient program with co-occurring co disorders and um, they were court mandated to be there. And I ran group process and I did one-on-one -on -one counseling. And it was my favorite job. I absolutely loved it next to working at the counseling center at Ocean County College. And I'll tell you what, I know that I was meant to be in this field because I sat across from murderers in a room by myself with the door closed. And I'd have some of my friends say to me, weren't you terrified? And I would say, no, my job is to sit across from this person and have absolutely no judgment and no bias and all I'm doing is staring into the eyes of another human being. And what they did outside that room doesn't matter. I have a job to do and I'm gonna do it. And I was really able to do that. I was really able to detach from knowing if they were um, predators, 
if there was sexual assault, molestation, abuse, murder. Most of my clientele were white males. Um, I learned a lot about what really happens during incarceration. It's quite heartbreaking how hard of a time they have reintegrating back out into society. Um, and so I did a lot of self-care practices with these men because they were really broken from a hard life that yes, they created, they made their choices. Most of them understood that, they took full responsibility. They seemed extremely sorry for their transgressions and they truly seemed like they wanted to make their life better. I think about these people all the time I had about 12 people in group process. I did a lot of smart recovery with them because I'm a certified smart recovery facilitator. Smart recovery is based on, you know, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, it's based on REBT, rational emotive behavior therapy. And you're getting them out of the primal brain, which you're very stuck in, that fight, flight, or freeze and addiction into the prefrontal cortex. And so, I just loved that gig so much. And I knew going to group process for them was a way for them to connect. And we all had a deep affinity for one another because my first day there, they, they were not very nice to me. And they said, yeah, you know, we don't care. Um, you have no idea how many new counselors walk in here um, and after one session, we never see them again. They never come back. Nobody has faith in us. And I came back. Every day I came back that I was scheduled to be there. And they really valued and appreciated that. They needed somebody consistent and reliable. You have to understand when you are in a cycle of abuse, trauma, when you are stuck in cycles of addiction, when you come out of that, we need people who are reliable, consistent, and they show up. I cannot stress that enough. I have a really low tolerance for people who are not reliable and not consistent in my life. I need that. That is something that is extremely important to me. It is a high priority. And so anyone who has proven to be inconsistent or unreliable, I just don't think twice about them. Do you, you know, your words and your actions need to be congruent with people like me because we've just been through too, through too much. We've just been through too much and we need that stability and we need that sense of security. Although security can be, it's very, you know, there's like false sense of security. Like everyone in corporate who has their benefits and they're punching in and they're punching out. You might feel like you have a sense of security, but none of that's really secure. I mean, we're living in very chaotic times. So a lot of them, which is why another reason why I love yoga is it's teaching you how to create that still stability within yourself. But I'm talking about like intimate relationships, not, not intimate relationships in terms of like dating somebody, you know, although that's in there, but I'm talking friendships, partnerships, you know, when you're coming out of hard times, you need reliable, consistent people. Anyway, that was another tangent. I just can't help myself. I just go. I think I just, I speak from the heart and sometimes I have an idea of what I want to talk about and then I'm just led to other places and I have to trust that. So understand that if you want somebody who's extremely linear to listen to and goes from A to Z, I'm not that person. You know, my dad used to tell me I was like an F5 tornado. Um, I am a bit of a spiral and I know that. If you saw the way that I took notes, I fill the notebook properly in order and then I have side notes and stuff all over the place. My, my brain has just always worked that way. I, I don't know, that's just how I function. Anyway, I'm not gonna make a lot of apologies for myself because I have to trust my intuition and I feel like spirit leads me um, to certain places and I, and I need to go there and trust that what's coming out of my mouth is for the highest good for all. So back to self-care and community care. Um, I think self-care has its place. I think that there's a dark side. I think that we are creating a generation of beings with strong narcissistic tendencies. I will not say that they're narcissists. That's not fair. 
I think we're over diagnosing people as bipolar and narcissist and borderline and stuff like that. Um, I think we need to get away from so much damn labeling. It's just my opinion. But, uh, and I know I say, but uh, you all can play drinking games with my videos. How many times do I say, but, and, and, um, there you go. We used to do that when we were younger. Back in the days when I drank, we would listen to Sting's uh, Roxanne. And every time he sang Roxanne, you had to like take a shot or drink. So you can do that with my videos. So I don't really recommend that because I don't really want to like condone excessive drinking. I don't want that on my shoulders, but it would be a fun drinking game. Um... And then there's a homeopathic remedy to help detox your liver from all the alcohol. So you can call me and I'll prescribe it for you. But I think community care is really important. I think it's good to take care of yourself. But I think that we're afraid to talk about the practical side of self-care to circle back to what I was really here to talk about, um, which can be doing hard things. And it's not all love and light, as the yogis say, love and light. You want to know the truth about a lot of yogis and the, the truth about 95% of the spiritual communities. They are great white sharks. Yoga is a business. They will step all over you to get fame, to be the most popular yogi, to have the most students in the class, to be that rock star teacher. So don't be fooled. It's the same shit under a different guise. It's exactly like working for corporate, which is why I'm out on my own for yoga for the most part. I mean, I'm teaching yoga at a facility, but I'm an independent contractor. I go in, I do my thing and I leave. I think everybody that works there is lovely. And I hope I get to know, you know, some of them better, but believe you me, do not be fooled by all of this love and light, namaste. These people, Now, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything more because it's not nice, right? So I shouldn't say it. I've not had good experiences in spiritual communities. Um, you know, I'm not really into drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm into being a very grounded, practical, relatable human being. So I'm not, uh, I'm not floating in 5D. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, good for freaking you because you have no idea how zany all that can get. And I'm not saying that frequency and vibration aren't real. And I'm not saying that you should tend to your aura because you absolutely should. But I think we need to be really grounded in, in all of this stuff. And so anyway, community care can look different for lots of different people. Like I said, for addiction, it could be attending meetings. You know, maybe community care for you is going out with a group of people, you know, I used to do um, events with the Girls Who Hike groups for South Carolina. I'm sure I'll get involved back with them. I'm actually teaching yoga at the Autumn Camp Out for Girls Who Hike North Carolina. Thank you so much, Amanda, for inviting me in to do that. I'm super excited. Um, community care, you know, I might, I might join a hiking group or maybe, maybe I'll start my own. Um, but for me, you know, community care is very specific. It's It would involve nature and the outdoors where community care for somebody else might be like joining a meetup group and, you know, going to wineries and breweries. It doesn't, there's no right or wrong, but I think sometimes we get so steeped in self with this westernized individuality, which I do believe is happening. And I do see a bit of heightened narcissistic tendencies among our youth. And I don't love it. I don't think it's healthy. I don't think it's going to help heal the planet. I think some of that has its place in under certain pretenses and context. But I do, I think my wish for society is to get moving back towards it takes a village where neighbors were neighbors and people really took care of one another and we weren't so bizarrely afraid of one another. Did you ever see, uh, what is his name? Anthony Maniscalco, is that his name? 
And that skit that he does, if you don't know that I, I love comedy, I love comedy. I've taken improv comedy lessons. Uh, there was an improv group back in New Jersey. They wanted me to audition for the female part. And I just didn't, I didn't have... I didn't have big balls back then. I don't know, I couldn't do it and I was entrenched. My kids were so young. Life was really hard back then, but they used to pull me up on stage. It was a lot of fun. But Anthony Mat Maniscalco does this skit um, where like, you know, back when like, like my mom, with the way I grew up, coffee was always on, the tea kettle was always on, and there was entomins that you could not touch because it was for the guests. We had an open door policy, people walking in and out, you know, who's coming over, who's staying for dinner, who's my mom cooking for, who's coming over for a tea party. And then the next part of a skit is like, somebody's at the door, mom, get down, turn out the lights, nobody talk, heads down, heads down. You know, like we are in this really bizarre place in life where we hide from one another. It's just sad. It makes me sad. It's so extreme. It's so fear-based. Um, so I know that I can be like an F5 tornado and I cycle in and out of things. But if you stayed with me for this whole video, I so deeply appreciate you. Um, my only goal and intention right now for this channel, since I'm paying a lot more attention to it, is just to be... Um, a life raft and a beacon of hope and a spark of light for people out there who are looking for guidance. Um, I have a very unique story. I'm not trying to specialize myself. Um, you know, I'm just a speck of sand like all, all of you watching, but I just want to be a support system and share what I know and what I've learned um, because I had to learn a lot of things the hard way and that's because life was very hard. I am grateful for all the mountains that I had to climb. Some I feel like I could have done without, but it's definitely made me who I am. It's brought me to this place. I've had a few new subscribers. I'm so grateful for you all. I'm so happy more people are sharing with me and commenting. I will always comment back. If that doesn't happen right away, just give me time, I will get to you. I don't ever want anybody to feel embarrassed or afraid to reach out to me. I love connection. I want this to be a community-based channel where we can share freely. This is not a judgment zone. I'm not here to judge anybody. Um, I'm inherently flawed. I'm, I'm a work in process like everyone else. But I do hope that I bring you some comfort. Um, I do hope that I bring you some peace. I do hope that I maybe on occasion make you laugh and bring you some joy because it is my honor and my pleasure to do that. I think we really need more of this. And um, as much as I try to keep it positive, I also honor the shadow side of life and the hardships and the challenges and one of my favorite sayings, which I know is so like, ugh, you know, but this too shall pass. So if you're going through a hard time right now, this too shall pass. Don't be afraid to reach out. I would love to be a support system for you. Thank you again. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Ciao.